What's up guys, welcome to my intro to getting set up with Haskell and using VS Code. Haskell is a programming language. If you've never done any code coding before, um, we write different programs using different languages, just like how different people speak different languages. And in order to write these programs, you're going to need a program called a code editor. And just to, and this will be like your Microsoft Word, but for writing code. And you're going to need um, either the compiler or interpreter for that language. Now, if you're new to computer science, you're probably going to be wondering, what the hell are those? A compiler basically turns your source code into an actual program that can be run. And an interpreter just kind of directly runs your source code. You're going to need one of these two things to actually make a program. The Haskell community provides a tool called Stack that is used from the command line, like most compilers and interpreters. The Haskell Stack tool isn't actually a compiler or interpreter. Rather, it downloads compilers and interpreters as you need them, depending on your project configuration. It also serves as a package manager, which is a way of installing different libraries that add functionality to the core language. Okay, so getting started using Haskell on Windows, we're going to go to docs.haskellstack.org. I'm going to scroll down and click on the Windows 64 bit installer. Should download fairly quickly. Okay, make note of the install location. If something goes wrong, this is going to be important. And making sure that it adds to the path. Okay, yours might take a little bit longer to install. Mine installed fairly quickly because it's been installed before. To check that it's working, open up a PowerShell and type in stack space GHCI. This will launch the Haskell interpreter. If this is the first time you're doing this, it'll take a little while. Press colon quit to quit. If you're installing on Mac OS, you're going to go to docs.haskellstack.org, and you're going to copy this command down here. Then open up a terminal by pressing the Apple button in space and searching for terminal. And the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to run a command um, xcode select dash dash install. This is going to install the command line tools necessary to then install Haskell. So you need to make sure these are installed first. This might take a little while. So just be patient. Once this is done installing, you're going to paste in that command that we copied from the Haskell.stack.org page. And you're just going to let it run. This also might take a little while. Make note of where on your system this was installed. If something went wrong, most likely you're going to have to add um, this location to your path variable. You can check that it's working now by typing in stack space GHCI. If this is the first time you're doing this, it'll download um, the interpreter. This will take a little while. Once that's done, you should arrive at a prompt like this, prelude. This is the Haskell interpreter. To quit, press colon Q-U-I-T, colon quit. And that will exit the interpreter, and you're good to go. Now we need a code editor, so let's install Visual Studio Code for Windows. Go to code.visualstudio.com and click the Download Windows button. This should automatically start downloading the user setup executable. Launch that when it's finished. Accept the agreement. Make note of the path install location next to this. You may not may not want to click off these options. They're kind of just nice extra features. Click next, and we should start installing. This will take a little while. Okay, and when you're finished, you should be able to launch Visual Studio Code. And you're good to go. If you're on Mac OS, go to code.visualstudio.com 
and click the download from Mac button. It should automatically start downloading Visual Studio Code. Open it up. It's a zip file that will contain the Visual Studio Code executable. And like with all Mac applications, just copy this application into the Applications folder. And then open it. You might want to right click and open if it's not letting you open it. The first time you open it, it'll verify it. And you're good to go. An integrated development environment is a code editor that integrates with compilers and interpreters to give a bunch of extra functionality, like evaluating the code um, through the editor or doing code completion, a bunch of really, really nice stuff. A lot of people confuse integrated development environments with the compilers themselves. So I, so I hear like a lot of intro programmers say stuff like, oh, idle is Python. Like they don't know the difference between the Python interpreter and the idle code editor that then connects to Python to run Python code. VS Code can be used as an IDE through installing its sections. So VS Code actually has this really like nice community that builds um, extensions that give all sorts of nice extra functionality to um, different programming languages. So if we want VS Code to have fancy IDE features when programming in Haskell, we're gonna have to install the Haskell extensions in VS Code. So to do that, we're going to open up VS Code and we're going to go to the extensions tab. So if you go to the left here, the extensions tab here, and we're going to search for the extensions we want. And I'm going to recommend you install two extensions. One will be just called the Haskell extension. So just search Haskell it should be the first one that pops up. We call it just Haskell and we just click install. Okay. And the second one, will be the Haskell Lee extension. So if you just add a Y, so Haskell Lee with a Y and click on that and click install. And there we go. And now we should have um, support for fancy features when programming in Haskell. And you can read the page to see what kind of support you get. Okay, so now that we have everything installed, we can go ahead and create our first Haskell project. So to do that, we're going to do that from the command line. So let's open up a new terminal. Okay. And you might want to CD into a folder where you want to keep your Haskell stuff. So CD and pick a folder. And here's a little trick for you. If you um, want to, you can open up Explorer or Finder on Mac OS and, you know, grab a folder, browse wherever you want, like inside your documents and grab a folder. And if you drag it in here, See, it'll just auto-complete the path to that folder for you. Okay, so now we're in that folder and we'll create a new Haskell project with the command staff new. And here's the tricky part. We're gonna have to specify a resolver. We're gonna specify resolver equals 16, it equals LTS dash 16.31. And I'll explain what the resolver is in a moment. And we're gonna pick a um, project name. So you can just call it basically whatever. Let's just call this test project. Okay, and I'll run some stuff that you can mostly ignore. And now if you press LS, you'll see that the folder contains your test project. So we can CD into that. CD test project and press LS. And you can see there's a bunch of um, auto-generated files and directories inside here that I'll explain in a moment. So before I do that, just a note on what that resolver thing is. So if you go to stackage.org here, okay, this lists all of the different resolvers that you can pick from. And you can see um, 16, it lists 16.31 here um, is for GHC 8.8.4. So choosing the resolver chooses what version of the compiler you're using. And if you click on that, you could see it's not actually just the version of the compiler, but here are all sorts of libraries. So you can import these libraries to use these this already written code for you. And it specifies what version of each of these libraries are at too, so that you know 
everything will be at a very specific version and you won't have any version conflicts, which is a very nice thing in this day and age. Now, one thing to really note, so LTS 16.31 corresponds to GHC 8.8.4. If you go to the Haskell, um, if you go to the Visual Studio Code marketplace.com here, and you look up the Haskell extension, you'll have some information on the Haskell extension. And if you scroll down, you'll notice, unfortunately, only certain versions of GHC are supported. So if you want the Haskell features, you're gonna to have to choose an LTS that is supported by this extension. So you'll notice over here that 8.8.4 is supported on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So as of the time of this video, However, this might change in the future. If you're watching this video, you know, a few years later, you might have to look up and find a different resolver to get the correct support. Okay, now that we've created our project, let's open it up in VS Code. I want to file, open folder. So we wanna open up the whole project folder. So just navigate to wherever you created it. Uh, test project. So want to open up the test project folder that we created and enable yes if it asks you this. Okay, and you'll notice there's a lot of stuff in this folder, but the main file that um, we're going to concern ourselves with is going to be in source lib.hs. And you'll notice when you click on this, it starts activating the extensions and this might actually take a while. It might have to download quite a few things the first time you do it or anytime you use a uh, different version of GHC. So just wait a while for it to finish downloading. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do to start playing around in Haskell is to try to load a module into the Haskell interpreter, otherwise known as GHCI. So let's take a look at this lib.hs file that has the lib module inside here that automatically gets generated for you by stack. And you'll notice that it automatically gives you a function, some func here. So let's load this into the interpreter by opening up a terminal. And we're gonna make sure that we're in test project here, that we're in the root project of, um, folder. And if you're not in there, so remember, if you can't see it at the side, you can type PWD to see where you are. And if you're not in the right folder, you can type CD and CD into the folder. Okay, so CD and you can drag the folder over like I showed you before or whatever. Okay, making sure that you're in the folder, what we want to do is we want to load this file. So type LS, you can see, oh yeah, there's the source folder inside here. If we type LS source, you can see what's inside the source folder. So we'll have to type source. There's a lib. So if we want to load this file, what we do is we would write stack ghci source slash lib.hs. Okay. And this might take a little while if it's the first time you're doing it because it might have to download ghc still. Okay. And when it's done doing that, you should get a prompt like this that, uh, shows the module name that you loaded. So we loaded lib here. So it should, should so the, show the module name that you loaded here. And now we're in the interpreter in the command line. So the interpreter is like a command line based playground where you can just kind of execute the functions you've written. So if we want to try executing some func here, all we have to do is write some func. And you'll see that it prints back some func. Now, the interesting thing that's going on here is uh, some, it, what some func does is it says put str ln, that stands for put string line, some func. So this is called a string value. It's a value put in quotes, a bunch of characters that are put in quotes. And so it'll print this back to you, whatever this is. So let's try changing this and then seeing if it prints something back else back to us. So we can type in hello 1jc3. Okay, and now let's try executing some func. Hmm, still prints the same thing. Okay, here's the deal. We need to make sure every time we change something, first of all, we need to make sure that we save. So if you actually look at the top here, the lib.hs tab here, see how the tab 
has a white dot there, that means it's not saved. So we just press Control S and it'll save. Okay, see that white dot has gone away. So now we know it's saved, but we also have to reload it back into GHCI. So we have to go to GHCI and press colon RE or reload and it'll reload the module. So making sure that we saved and reload, now let's execute Sumpunk. Hello one JC2. Okay, so now our sync has changed. And when we want to quit the interpreter, we'll press colon Q, quit, colon, and we'll be back at our normal command line prompt now. So now we're outside of the interpreter and we can do stuff like ask what directory we're in or list it inside the directory. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to learn is how to deal with errors. So this time um, when we made our change, nothing went wrong. You'll notice that I reloaded and it said compiling. Okay, module reloaded, everything was fine. So what if there is an error in our code? So let's say I delete this quotation right here. And you'll notice that if you have the Haskell extension installed properly, it immediately tells you there's an error. You don't actually have to compile anything to get the error. And if you put your cursor over top of where the red line is, where the error appears, it'll tell you what the error is. Okay, it'll say lexical error and string character. Okay, so it's, it's saying that um, basically you're missing the end quotation. That's a complicated way of it saying you're missing the end quotation. The errors aren't as always straightforward as you would like them to be in programming languages. So, but let's just say um, you didn't notice this and you loaded it into GHCI. I'll just run through source, look at this. You'll notice that this time um, it tells you failed, no modules loaded, and it gives you the error um, that we're already able to see because of the fancy IDE features we have right here. And you'll also notice that your prompt here won't say the name of the module, but prelude, which is the default Haskell module. Get back out of that. So now that you have the Haskell stack tool installed and VS Code installed and configured to use Haskell, you guys are ready to code. I highly recommend you do everything I showed you inside this video, including um, creating a new Haskell project with stack and building the project and changing it from printing out some funk to hello world. I believe in you guys. Have a good one.